Shalom, Yashala, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Yasharala. Kol Holoyim La, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Haraka Kodash, for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwaf. That's keeping the faith in the works. Y'all keep at it. This your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. It's the book of Revelation. Chapter 13. And verse 16. And he causeth all of us, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a M-A-R-K in their right hand or in their foreheads. And I'm going to the... I'm in, I'm in the blue little... Blue Letter Bible reading this. Um, if you are a student of the truth, this is an, an important tool to have. The Blue Letter Bible. It's not an actual physical Bible that you can hold, but it's an app that you can download on your phone. You can download on your tablet or computer. And um, the only thing about it, it doesn't have the apocrypha in it. But... Um, every word that's in the scripture, you can, um, uh, you know, trace it back to where it was translated from. <clears throat> so I'm going to look up this word, M-A-R-K. All right. Um, so one second. So Revelation 13, 16, interlinear. And mm -mm, Mark or M A R K Strong's G fifty four eighty Haragma 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 Right A stamp an imprinted M A R K of the M R of the M A R K stamp on the forehead or the right hand as the badge of the followers of the Antichrist. The M-A-R-K branded upon horses, thing carved, sculpture, graven work of idolatrous images. All right? Graven. Right. It says Strong's definition, Karakma, from the same as G5482, a scratch or etching. For example, stamp as a badge of servitude or a sculptured figure, statue, graven mark, or M A R K so Let me see. G5481. Strong's G, 5482, Karaks. Karaks. Right, or 5482, Karaks. All right. So, it says, a pale or stake, a palisade, a palisade or a rampart, pales between which earth, stones, trees, and timbers are heaped and packed together. All right. A pale or or stake, right? Something that's etched inside of you, right? Let's see. Let read this again. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, meaning everybody, to receive an M-A-R-K in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell Save he that had the M-A-R-K or the name of the beast or the number of his name. All right. So um, same verses, but in the New Living Translation. Um, Revelation 13, 16. He required everyone, everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to be given the M-A-R-K on the right hand or on the forehead. And no one could buy or sell anything without that M-A-R-K which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. All right. 
Let me watch this. Or I'll let y'all watch this, and I'll be right back. I told you it was coming. I said they'd go for central bank digital currencies, a cashless society, and the arguments for it are clear. It'll be quick, easy, cheap to transact. There'll be no problems at all, no loose change lying around. There'll be lots and lots of arguments for it. Well, this week, the Chancellor of the Exchequer and the Bank of England have said by 2030, Britcoin, a central bank digital currency, will be up and running. It will, to begin with, be limited in scope, but with huge ambitions for the years to come. I think this could pose some real threats. It actually gives government pretty much total control over our lives because they can just press a button and close our bank accounts. No, they wouldn't do that now, would they? Well, think about it. Those Canadian truckers, they were legally and lawfully going about their business driving trucks, but legislation came in demanding that unless they'd been double vaxxed, they couldn't continue in their cabins doing long-distance lorry driving. And they protested. And in the end, their bank accounts were closed down by the Canadian government. Well, with a central bank digital currency, anyone that decides to stand up and fight against the government could be pressed down simply with the push of a button. That is my concern. What is it all going to mean? Well, joining me down the line is Leah Harpern, and she's a podcaster, but also the author of Undressing Bitcoin, not Britcoin, Bitcoin. Leah, thank you and welcome uh, for joining me this evening. Um, just explain, central bank digital currencies, this isn't just the Bank of England considering this, is it? Exactly. Currently, more than 90% of central banks globally are all working on bringing out a central bank digital currency. And I think... More than 90%. This ain't just the daughter of Babylon. This is around the world. Cause it all. Right? Well, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 16. And verse 2 says, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men that upon the men which had the M A R K of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Right. So the first, uh, this is Revelation sixteen, on uh, verse two in the New Living Translation. So the first angel left the temple and poured out his bowl on the earth, and horrible, malignant sores broke out on everyone who had the M-A-R-K of the beast and who worshipped his statue. Right? Of course, the image ain't a damn statue. <laughs> the image is what this man is speaking on right now. It's a new world, a new digital world. Right? And China already with it. Right? In fact, I keep hearing on um, Klaus Schwab, um, basically the the, um, the leader of the World Economic Forum and several others of his stature say that the world need to be moving like China's moving. And every time I hear that, it takes my mind to Second Ezra's, um, it's chapter 15, um, let me see. Second Ezra 15 and verse 46. And thou Asia that art partaker of the hope of Babylon and art the glory of her person. What's the hope of Babylon? The hope of Babylon is this new digital world order. Right? It's, it's always, it always has been. Right? Look on the back of your dollar. You'll see what, what's being spoken of. Right? Google what the Latin on the back of the dollar means. Google um, the numeric value of the symbols in the back. Right? The number of stripes on the shield that the eagle holding. The number of stars. The number of bricks that's in the pyramid. Right? Google the pyramid itself with the R C N I at the top and see what they mean. Right? It's always been the ambition of the daughter of Babylon to go into a new digital world order, controlling everybody through finances. Because what the scriptures say about money, man. Let me see. Uh, let 
This is Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 19. A feast is made for laughter and wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. This devil underst fully understands that everybody need money, right? This man created money and it's all for control. It ain't based off of nothing, right? It's based off of debt, literally based off of nothing. Right? Money answer with all things, but money is also it's the book of First Timothy chapter six, verse ten, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. One of those sorrows that we read about was the sores that people are gonna receive after they take the MARK. And it's going to be for financial reasons because no one will be able to buy or sell save he that has this thing. All right. It's really important to elaborate on what exactly that is. A central bank digital currency is basically what we have now. So it's fiat currency, but it's going to be entirely digital, which means absolutely in the control of the government and the central bank. So as you mentioned, governments, since they own it, they're able to program it in a way that we've never seen before. So as you said, if for whatever reason you don't do as you're told and you don't take three vaccines, four vaccines or whatever it is, the money can just be programmed to be used against you. The perfect example is right now we're living during uh, we're living during this supposed climate crisis where they want to implement a carbon allowance. So how do you do that? Well, it's very simple. You just program the money in a way that you cannot do with the current cash that we have. You program the money. So if, for example, you yeah. have a barbecue and you um, want to buy some steaks, some burgers, some sausages, whatever it is, um, you could actually reach your carbon allowance. So when you go to fill up your car, it could get declined because you reach your carbon allowance. So it's a really efficient way for governments to implement their political and woke agendas through the money. Well, all of this, of course, Leia, all of this will be denied at every stage by government. But when you look at the incredible um, overreach of government over the course of the last few years, nothing is impossible. Now, I know that you are a great advocate for Bitcoin, uh, perhaps for other cryptocurrencies too. Uh, and and, and it's, you know, this, this program is not here to give investment advice. But I'm thinking to myself... If we move towards full central bank digital currencies, and I don't want government to control potentially every aspect of my life, presumably this could be the biggest thing that's ever happened to Bitcoin and other crypto coins. Absolutely. During um, the time of the truckers, we used to say that Justin Trudeau was the best advocate for Bitcoin because with Bitcoin, when you hold it correctly in a non-custodial <laughs> wallet, which means outside of um, any CEO or centralized control, nobody can freeze it. Nobody can touch your funds as long as it's in a non-custodial wallet. And that's the most important thing. And, you know, you, you don't have to buy Bitcoin for an investment purposes. It's about being a sovereign individual because money is the, is the energy which fuels your life. So, so what she said was, um, this Bitcoin thing will will grant you sovereignty. Basically, you'll be able to take care of yourself without uh, assistance from an outside source. And the daughter of Babylon's leaders, they know that information. That's why they, <clears throat> and why they um, they've been speaking about doing away with Bitcoin. It is also why the Bitcoin market goes up and down. How how it does because. The daughter of Babylon's leaders are fighting against it. That's gonna get that's gonna get done away with, man. Right? Eventually, they're gonna do away with that. They they might even make it illegal to have. Right? And you gonna you you will have to solely rely on the hand of the wicked. Right? If you you know a part of that world, if you already worshiping the image, right? you're already worshiping the beast, then you know that's for you. But as far as everybody else, man, everybody else, uh, what I mean when I say that is, the, you know, the men and women of the Lord, we already understand where our help resides, where our, where our uh, you know, where our strength is. All right, so let me see. It's the book of um, Psalms, chapter 27 and verse 1 says, it says, Yahweh is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
Yahweh is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? All right, Matthew, let me start that over. Psalm 27 and 1, a psalm of Dawah da, a psalm of David. Yahweh is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yahweh is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? All right? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up, eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Right? Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Right? Because that's all this going to equate to. Uh, 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 Revelation 12, making the, the, uh, the dragon making war with the saints. That's all this is, all this is, this is about, man. Right? Um, verse 4, one thing have I desired of Yahweh that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of Yahweh. All the days of my life to behold the beauty of Yahweh and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Their understanding, their wisdom, the truth. Right? That's what that's what's gonna save us, man. Um, you know, matter of fact, well that's gonna be the strength of our salvation. You already know where I'm going. <laughs> right? Um, this is Isaiah. Um, Isaiah 33. And uh, verse 6, it says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. Right? The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. That's our treasure. Can I buy no, uh, no M-A-R-K? No Karagma. Right, can't nothing about it, man, because we already understand that uh, Yahweh Bashim and Shai got this thing in motion, and, and, and he gonna take care of us in the midst of all of the nonsense. All right, so right now, in the meantime, between time, uh, Scripture says, "In your so in in your patience, possess you your soul." Right, so when times get rough now, if you folding under pressure now. There may be a sign of things to come for you, right? If hard times come around and you can't stay solid in what you know, and you uh, start acting emotional and irrational, then, hey, like I said, man, it may be a, a, a sign of what you're going to go through in, in, in the future. And Revelation 13, 16 through 18, that's for you, right? But just know. We go to the book of Revelation, chapter 14, and um, verse 9. It says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, if you already doing it, because it's, it's steps. You worship, the, you worship the beast, you worship the image, and then you're going to receive that thing. Because you got faith in the beast. You don't have faith in your help. You have faith in the system. You don't have faith in the spirit. Right? So it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark, or and receive his M-A-R-K in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of power, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. All right? And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the M-A-R-K of his name. There is no repentance for that. That's the judgment. If you take that thing, that's the judgment. Along with the swords that we read about. Right? And <laughs> that's going to be for however long. How about Shemi Al-Shah wants you, <clears throat> want you to endure that. Alright, so. Revelation 14 and 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of power and the faith of Yahweh Shai. Right? And I end with that, man. Yahweh Shai Ratazah. 
these precepts in this video were edifying. Call Haloyim La, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Harachah Kudash Shalom, Yashallah.